What's going on, everybody? It's Trebe from Colch Talks. And I'm going to do that because before we even started recording this podcast, I realized I fucked up the bet, Colch, and I will be a, a man and just straight up admit that. But I fucked up the, uh, the protocols on my end. But why don't you tell the people what, what our bet was? <clears throat> oh, so the bet originally was if the Steelers won... Your name would be Cold Talks on YouTube for the rest of the year, but you did it for just the week. Yeah, I did it for the week, and YouTube only allows three name changes every 90 days. So if I changed it back to Cold Talks, it'd be like that for three months. And even though we love Cold, we're going to brand Treep Talks. For at least those three months. But, but something good is on the way, <clears throat> folks. Trust we're, me. We're planning something. Treep's going to get his comeuppance one way or another <laughs> because I'm, I'm stupid enough to bet on Jake Luton and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Which, by the way, I didn't get to rant about that game because I didn't do a recap and I didn't get to do anything. That game's a whole two weeks behind us now. But that might have been, like, the worst quarterback play I've ever seen in my life. That's like, not true, though. The receiver that had to play for the Broncos. Well, but he, he he's like... He scored just as much points as Tom Brady did against the Saints. Exactly. Year, so. <laughs> exactly. He, in two games. He exactly. he was a receiver coming into an impossible situation. Yeah, but he, but he played quarterback in high school. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> played quarterback in high school. I can't, I, 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 I was but did you see how so, big he... Like, he's smaller yeah. than Kyler Murray. Yeah. I was getting yeah. so annoyed was when, there was, when they kept saying, oh, he played in high school, quarterback in high school. So? That was like 20 years ago. Get over it. <laughs> That's like calling Dreeb up from King Services and telling him to go play for fucking the Broncos. I bet he'd be better, though. That's, that's what Dreeb I'm saying. The Dreeb, Rock Dreeb's so killer better. sidearm. They should, they it would should. be how long he stays in the game, though. They, yeah, they He's going to get hit really hard. Hit, <laughs> hit, <laughs> he was, he was probably about Season. as skinny as that wide receiver was. Well, I mean, yeah, that that but, dude was not nimble. You know, I think Dreeb gets hit a few times. He might be questionable. I think Dreeb gets hit once. <laughs> the crew injury. Broken shoulder. Lingering crew injury. See, the thing is, though, is Dreeb. He kind of got fat after he had a baby. <laughs> yeah. Which might do him better for a quarterback, you know? That, that, that fat. And the thing is, is if Dream gets decided to play quarterback, you know Big Leaves coming on to play center. <laughs> Maybe you should play oversized tight end. He's got some good hands. Yeah, he's definitely, he's, he's going to he's gonna smack the, the six-man tight end that comes in on the goal line, mm-hmm. and he's going to go out for a pass this time. <laughs> Big Leaves going to snag it. But I was stupid that. enough to bet on the Jaguars beating the Steelers, the undefeated Steelers, and, you know, mostly just kind of did that for the channel, for the boys, for the Jags, even though, you know, we want we wanted the Jaguars to lose, but I thought it'd be fun. But uh, the Steelers kind of got their game cut short this week, and we were, we were talking about it, you know, before we started the podcast. I think this whole situation is kind of kind of fucked how they're treating some teams better than others for sure with this COVID mm-hmm. situation Fitz what do you think uh well first of all on the COVID topic I think that is absolutely fair to have the Broncos play against the Saints not reschedule it three of their starting quarterbacks out they basically just slapped the Broncos and John Elway in the face I mean like a Super Bowl champion winning quarterback who's now the GM you just slapped him straight in the upside the fucking face Said, well, your team's not going to win anyway. Didn't matter who was playing. Yeah. You guys were going to lose. That's what they said right there. And then they're going to reschedule a game where, like, J.K. Dobbins and Mark Ingram, that was when they originally rescheduled the Steelers Ravens game, Mm -hmm. was off of those two. It wasn't off Lamar. That came out on Thanksgiving. Yeah. It was the day before. That was, those two have not done a single thing for the Ravens offense this whole year. Ingram's been irrelevant. He's been, Dobbins, very, he's been very irrelevant. Yeah, Dobbins has been, you know, mediocre. Mediocre. He's hit and miss, and it's like half the carries. You're getting, you're getting more out of Lamar. You're getting more out of Gus. Lamar Evans. has, yeah, like Kyler has more rushing yards than probably both those backs combined. Yeah, and I mean, there's, there's just no excuse for this. Like, I, I think if you're gonna do it one way, you need to do it consistently. Like you, and yeah. I know it, it's, it's a tough thing to do. But, I mean, you look for, like, it's not like it hasn't been done in professional sports. I mean, the NBA did The bubble. It. The, the bubble. bubble, yeah. The, Niners, the MLB did it. The Niners are literally going, the 49ers will be the first team in a bubble in the NFL, and it's because they have to come to Arizona. 
It's because Santa Clara put no contact sports in their county mm -hmm. for like the next three weeks. So they had to figure out a place to play. They're going to come to Arizona because we play on Sunday. They play on Monday because they play the Bills. So we had to work everything out with that. So they're going to be the first team in a bubble where they're basically going to go down to the field, practice, and then be in the hotel. They have no access to outside because it's that's in crazy. the same building. And okay. that's it. So it's wild. I don't wonder know. What, wonder, if, wonder if they're going to change how they're going to change the field. wonder if they're going to spray paint it. Or if they're just gonna remove the turf, like if it's like those well, it's slide away fields. We'll, we'll play on. We play on Sunday, and what it is, we have real grass turfs that we slide in. Oh yes, in and out. Oh, so slide. we do have two fields that they're ready and available for practice and for them. So we got it all set up. But now on to my rant of the week. <laughs> yeah, let's see. This you know, isn't gonna be picks. This, this is was be just be a podcast. No, this <laughs> is this was two weeks ago. Um, we got fucked by the good old white and bl black checkered motherfuckers in Seattle. <laughs> I mean, we got absolutely fucked. And then you lost to the Patriots. We lost seven minutes in the fourth quarter because of a fucking goddamn safety call. That wasn't even a safety. My lineman's fucking got beat on the one-yard line. He's holding on the one. And the fucking, it's a reviewable play. Those fucking dumb refs have to fucking look over that thing. Because it's a scoring play. The motherfuckers didn't see obvious shit. It's fucking garbage. You're a 26-year head official. If you can't fucking see, put your dementia ass in the old folks' home and get out of here. I'm over it. <laughs> it's, it's that easy. Anybody, like, and they're getting paid $100,000 a year. Any average Joe can make that call and would love to be getting paid a salary like that. Yeah. So, I mean, fucking and he's already got 26 years. Yeah. So I'm sure he's been he's mighty fine mm -hmm. now after his professional 26 professional year career. You want to talk about how the game scoring field goal from Nick Folk last week? Yeah. Talk about the talk about the New England and oh, how no, and no. how that punt return was bullshit. That was just your okay. Fucking, yeah. Your player uh, being a pussy. No. And that I'm not I'm not done in yeah. Seattle because then DK. A 225-man oh, beast off. decides to come bull rushing a player who's talking shit on fourth down. That's my defensive's right. On fourth down, we stopped your ass. Good luck. Get the fuck off the field. It's, <laughs> it's the division. The division's on the line. NFC West, the hardest division in football. We're going to be talking all that shit because that's what we need to do to be competitive. Every drive, you got to be talk your shit. Be up in their face. Get in their grill. Well, guess what? DK didn't like it. So DK comes charging my player, and my player gets defensive taunting. But you're not going to give DK anything for throwing punches and charging my player? No, I'm not in sportsman like nothing. That's good. Oh, because Tyler was hurt? Tyler wasn't hurt. Tyler was trying to push to get the first down. We tackled him. Big, big whoop. Oh, yeah, and the Patriots. How can, the, how yeah, can a referee... That game was No, fucked. how can a side referee... Call my running back down at the one yard line when they show the camera angle that he's looking at. You can't even see Kenyon Drake from the can the sideline. He's looking down. You can't see my lineman. You can't see Kenyon Drake, and he called it at the one right before halftime. That's a two possession flip. We're fucked right there. We lost the game right there because of that. And he's calling it at the one. Yeah. Any other, if you're not New England. The officiators are going to throw the fucking hands up for a <laughs> touchdown, and then they'll look at it, and they'll say, okay, we fucked up. That's not a touchdown. Mm -hmm. They'll call that back. No head officiating crew is going to say, down at the one, when they don't even see it. Well, it is. When it's in New England, of course they will. Playoffs on the line. Hey, First season where the Patriots could not be in the playoffs. But, hey, but they need a bounce return, back game. That punt return call was bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it was. I agree. It was, but still, you can't have those things that that flip my game like that. You flipped our, you All right. flip back. That game was, I'm not going to lie, our mm. defense was holding Murray. We held Hopkins. We held. It's a sham. I hate it. <laughs> we, I we fucking hate Cam guys. Newton. I've hated him for years. He beats my team always. He doesn't have <laughs> to do anything. The guy had 69 yards passing and two picks. And 40, no, it was 96 yards passing. Oh, and 46 yards rushing. And he beat us. 
That was pretty he didn't even up. throw a pets passing touchdown. He didn't rush a rushing touchdown. That's our defense. And baby. he beat us. That's our Are defense. Are you kidding me? And and We're that is, that's garbage. <laughs> and now Cardinals, you're fucked. You're fucked. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and, it, and you can tell these last two weeks have taken a toll on on Larry's mental health, and that <laughs> and that and that is where Fitz currently stands. That's where Fitz draws the line. Like fucking, I'm down. That's that's where he stands right now, ladies and gentlemen. About but to change teams. After we have uh, kind of got everything settled and you guys have kind of heard from us and see where we stand lately, it is now time to reveal the standings. Now, before we do that, obviously we didn't miss a week. We missed week 12, but we did get 10 and 11. So this is going to be the week 11 picks combined with the week 10 picks. So this is the week 11 results. And Colch, yeah, you okay. Okay, were right. in last place. Treve actually made a comeback the mm-hmm. last week, and in the score currently, the current scoreboard, you have eighty-three. Treve had eighty-four. Did you make some headway into the leaderboard this week? Okay, so week ten and eleven. Yeah, my combined. You guys are gonna shit yourselves. Seven points. <laughs> week That's eleven. Awful. Week eleven. I scored one point. How? <laughs> That's bad, bro. Yeah. One point, and that oh. is. I don't really want to go into detail. So, what's your total? What's your total? Uh, so seven plus eighty-three, ninety. Ninety points. Mm-hmm. And Cold posts a one, which, ladies and gentlemen, that is now history. On NFL picks, and I don't think anybody can ever beat that unless somehow somebody goes negative, negative. or gets zero. Yeah, cold. I with... fucked it up bad. I I think I got. Yeah, it was just bad. I got my lock right, my upset wrong, and I got like two other games right. And that. Jeez, I feel bad. Yeah, that it was is. horrid. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. We so can just move just, on. We should, yeah, we should just, just we should just put a, a moment of silence for our, our brother. In the arms of <laughs> We're gonna get right. copyrighted. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, right. I just sing no, it too yeah, that's good. horrible. And I should have gone last. Tri- that was probably the most eventful one. <laughs> Tree puts in a score of nine to put myself up to ninety three. So that is a three point gap between. And I scored three. one point a week <laughs> last week. <laughs> <laughs> Cold. So, Fitz, what do you got? Uh, in week 10, I got nine. So it bumped me from 82 to 91. And then this week, I got six. So I mm. went from to 97. I got my lock right, my upset wrong. Just like last, both weeks, I got locks right, upsets wrong. I'm at 97 to finish out the week, which isn't even close to Cameron. I'm pretty sure he's in triple digits. 97 did. And that's, no, I mean, I'm, I'm at a race for you, man. Mm-hmm. Where, where are we? Exactly. I've had a few bad weeks. I literally have not touched double digits in probably six or seven weeks. Uh, Me and you are ratified. Which is, like, the worst I've ever done. Oh, I messed up. Six weeks straight. I'm at I'm at 84, not 90. Your calculations is bad. Yeah. Hey, 84. It's okay. so. Words. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, but he'll catch up. Yeah, he'll nope. catch up. Yeah, I, I messed weeks. that one up. I, what's I, we, made, what's I made we, sure. Once we figure out what's going down in the uh, in the playoffs, we'll mm-hmm. we'll make sure that mm. Colts can make a comeback and maybe Cam can be brought down a peg. Deep Cam, round. what do you got? Well, uh, I can't remember what I had in week 10, but week 11, I ended up with 102. And then with the weeks, with these points that I got right here, I got 8 games correct. So I'm at 110. 110. So the score, you know. Behind. That's still not bad. You know, bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know it's, it's, it, the, the scores are getting closer, you know. It's mm. a, at one point, it seemed like him, you know. At one point, still, I was above by like 20 plus. Yes. Yeah, so, so right now, we're kind of. It's a tr- it's a trickle down theory Which right is, now. You know, we're bumping. Back. I just don't want to be last. You're last year. You're gonna be last. We need I to start know. making it a punishment. 
spankings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, loser, awful. Has, loser has to get spanked. But, but, the Why? amount of times is their birthday from everyone. The amount of points they got. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's dude, the of loser of the got. week. Dude, the, no. loser, the loser gets what the winner gets. So you would have had to get spanked eight times. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Or nine times, because I got nine points. I don't want to be spanked. No. <laughs> We're going to have to think up ideas for next season. <laughs> this became a fetish podcast. But we'll be quick. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I get a little horny sometimes. <laughs> Back to your very straight football podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we got our week 13 matchups and starting things off this was supposed to be a thursday game but it got rescheduled to sunday and it's an nfc matchup nfc south matchup between the saints and the falcons and cam i'm really upset that our boy Jameis winston is not getting a chance but Taysom hill's looking pretty good who do you got in this matchup I'm definitely going to have to go with the Saints. Um, even if they were starting with Tyson Hill and they were switching off and off with him and Winston, and they're still doing pretty good. So I'm, I'm going to have to go with the Saints on this one. They're looking, if I'm being honest, there's three Super Bowl teams that I'm looking at right now that, for a fact, it would be the Chiefs, that's number one, the Steelers, and the Saints. And the Steelers and the Saints can go back and forth on who's second or third best. Because I honestly don't think the Steelers are number one. No. With, the, with the teams they played, with how close they are, and with how they got in the wins by the refs, they ain't no number one seed. They're for sure number two or three, but not refs. number one. You know how I view like the Chiefs and the Steelers? I view like the Chiefs are kind of like the mainstream, right? Like the things that everybody loves and like you know sexy offensive weapons. You got like Tyreek Hill, Patrick mm-hmm. Mahomes, and then like the Steelers are kind of underground indie. Music, dude. You got Chase Claypool, dude. Ain't nobody. Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson. Dude, he's a stud. Dude, Jay-Z. these motherfuckers wouldn't work like anywhere the else. Of the old and young guys. They got no, Cam Hayward. They got no. James Big Washington, band. dude. Marquise Pouncey. Dude, he shows up every re- dude, randomly. I love Alejandro no, Villanueva. Uh, Tyson yeah. Aluwalu is a stud. Yeah, we have studs. We have studs everywhere, and we we can make a Super Bowl run. We. I mean, we could beat the Chiefs. Yeah. Like, on, if your defense, on a good day. If, if on your paper, defense shows on up, paper, you yes. could beat the Chiefs. Because the defense matches up well. But we'll, yeah. we'll talk more about the Chiefs and the Steelers when we get to them. That's crazy transition yeah. there. Yeah. Cole, Judy got in the Saints-Falcons. I got the Saints, even though the Falcons got a big win uh, last week. But And I'm locking the Saints. Oh, you're going to lock the Saints? Mm-hmm. Quick off the dub there. Yeah, the Falcons were fun last week. You know, yeah, I like man. to see Matty Ice get his. You know, I love Matty I, Ice. Yeah, Julio do. still had zero catches, though. You know, Julio does his Julio's thing. washed. You know, he Bold might prediction be... of the week. No, he just wants he, to get out of He just wants he, to get out of is, there. Young Hoku is funny. the best kicker in the league. Oh, that's oh, funny. I had a memory pop up on my Snapchat, and I took a video, and I was like, man, this young Hoku. Ku was mm-hmm. gonna miss this, and he did. Yeah, it was and like it's, a thirty yard. He, he literally had like two of the worst kicking campaigns a kicker could have, and then he and bounced then back. He just and then the Falcons gave him a chance again because Matt Bryant had come back, and they had just messed up with some kicking problems, and now he's like, like five for or six for six from fifty plus, mm-hmm. and he's only missed like one one or two one kick all year or something like that. Just completely bites. <laughs> I honestly think like we're entering a new a new wave of wide receivers, you know, kind of a change of the guard. Guys like Julio Jones and AJ Green, I think, are kind of you know edging mm-hmm. their way out. Obviously, they're getting AJ older. Green is for sure gone. Julio still got some left in him, but I think it'll be for a different team. AJ Green has nothing left in him. But here's no. I'm going to go with my team this pick here, and I'm going to go with the Saints. Yeah, uh, I just think they got a lot going for him. I like Taysom Hill. I really did his first passing game. I think it was funny. I sent Tree in the picks. I was like, this is going to be an Alvin Kamara hat trick. Jameis Winston does what he normally does, garbage football. <laughs> and then they ended up starting Taysom over him. And Taysom's had two rushing touchdowns in each of these games. He's went 18 for 23 the first time he you know went out I, passing. And he had a 57-yard touchdown call back. Yeah. And threw deep. You know what I like? You can, you can start him as a tight end in fantasy. Not yeah. anymore. Yeah, no. <laughs> Not anymore. But the Saints, I'm taking the Saints by, I'm going to think they're going to blow them out. I think it's going to be like 45-10. A blowout. Hey. 
I think it'll be it'll be a fun NFC South matchup. I'm gonna take the Saints as well for a star frame five dollars charity of your choice. And that is now the ninth <laughs> game this season that we have started off with a star frame. It's almost too sweet to be sour. Speaking of that, I was just playing a game with a, a Warzone with a girl named Sour Sweet Jay. Really? Yeah. Pretty and then he sense. played a game with somebody named Jim Leahy. No yeah. way. Yeah. We can't be giving these gamer tags. Out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but there's some classic <laughs> names. No one's you know, gonna pick up those gamer tags. <laughs> if Come you know on. some classic TV shows, you know mm-hmm. what we're talking about. If you hail from Canada, you know. <laughs> Next up, we got the Cleveland Browns and the Tennessee Titans. The Browns. Got into a battle with the Jags last week in a must-win situation. They definitely need to beat a hot Titans team. Colts, what do you got? How can I pick against Ryan Tannehill and the Titans, man? When it comes down to it, the Browns won't be clutch. I, I just think the Browns be- are not going to stop. D-H, D-H, D-H. D-H, they ain't exactly. gonna stop him. They ain't gonna stop him, especially with, with, with what he did to the Ravens in the last call and OT when he got like that thirty yard run at the end of the, mm. the game. You know, pissed the Ravens. You know, how pissed the Ravens were when like when he got that because they could have after he got that they could have kicked the field goal in the game right then and there. But nah, they decided mm. to give it off one more time and he broke out. Mm-hmm. D-H all day, baby. Browns are not stopping that run game. Fitz. Well. I'm going to sort of agree with you on that. They're not going to stop that ground game, but I think it's going to be a Russian showdown. Nick yeah. Chubb's come back healthy from the run. He's had 270 rushing yards Yeah, in but the, the Titans have weeks. a better run defense than the Browns. I do not care. <laughs> we have a, a fresh Miles Garrett coming back from two weeks of COVID. <laughs> you're totally can fine. smell, can taste. Yeah. He's ready to go. Yeah, exactly. He's ready to <laughs> smack it's fresh. Kids with his helmet. But again. that's what I'm saying. Even when he was not hurt, so even two weeks off mm-hmm. on your body, doing not being around. I'm doing saying that, I had the nice. COVID. It was horrible for me. Some people, it's different. Yeah. yeah. Some people I'm get sure really for bad. a professional athlete, it's different. And I'm sure it's not as too bad for them because they have really good immune systems. Drugs. But yeah, and all that. And too. Doctors, access money. to that. So yeah. Ah. I just think the Browns, I think Miles Garrett's going to stop DH a little bit more, but I think DH and Nick Chubb are just going to, it's going to be a Russian showdown. Most and Russian I think, yards in a game. Yep, and I think the Browns are going to win this bitch. Oh. It's going to be a close showdown, but the Browns are going to get her done. That's and a burner, It's going to surprise us because you know why? The Browns have, they've been that one team that we just can't trust, you know? Mm-hmm. The record looks good. I think this is the game where I'm just saying, all right, Browns. You've made it. You've done it. You're in this year. I'm going to say the Titans beat the Browns in this one, and there's going to be 400 yards of rushing in this game combined between the Titans and the Browns. I can see it, man. I really can. All right, coming up next, we got the battle of two NFC North teams, and I don't really know what's going on. With the Chicago Bears, I I'll tell you what's going I, on. I feel like I want them to be good, and I think the the Bears are good, but no. but like, are they not? I mean, no. like they got some they got some guys. Yeah, but if you don't have a quarterback, it's it, it's it, ogre. And I know that they got Matt, they got Trubisky back in. Maybe. No, here's my thing. Trubisky Allen sucks. Robinson, one of the most reliable guys. Trubisky's better than Big Dick Nick Foles. Okay, but here's my thing too, though, guys. We he got, is. We got to talk about this. He was three and zero before the Packers game. Yeah. Let's put that into context. Yeah, he I mean, was doing Mitchell good. Trubis- he, was he was doing good, good and they, and benched, they him benched him for nothing. You, you for no can't reason. do that. That's on coaching staff mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. You lose a lot of confidence. And then he comes in this one, and I think also the Bears were dumb, really, honestly. You go down quick against Rodgers. He's up 14-0. You finally get a field goal. You get the ball back, and what do you do? Your first possession, you take a deep shot, and Darnell Savage got a pick. You can't do that. Yeah, that's bad coaching. You're already right down. You have to coach your way back into the game. You have to be conservative right and, there. And I honestly think this it's really hard with this Bears team because I think it's a completely different team. I think when Foles is in, 
the ground game's completely garbage. They can't get Montgomery going. Teams expect to stack the box. They want Foles to beat them. And then the team just doesn't look good. That's why the rush game's the 32nd in the league when Foles is in. But then you see when Trubisky's in. Then Montgomery starts to look like he's one of the the top five backs like he should have been, like he kind of was last year. He's had that potential. early on in the season. Yeah, he had the potential there. And I think that's why. There's two different offenses there. Yeah. And it's tough to because to Trubisky pick it can back. actually throw. Blake yeah. Foles is cannot. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not and they just expect you know more mobility out of Trubisky it means defenses have to play him different. Mm-hmm. And with Foles, it's just stack the box, make Foles throw. Right, not, and I, Foles, you know, he can't do that, and yeah. that's why they lost five straight. So before we continue anything, I just came back from the the restroom. And whoever went before me didn't flush, so I'm calling that out right now. Wasn't right. me. I've been in there. I mean, I think if you're going to call somebody out for not flushing while they piss, I feel like that's one thing. But if it, if someone didn't flush while they shit, I mean, that's come another on. thing. Because I looked in, I saw it looked yellow, it was yellow as fuck. I was like, oh. what the fuck is this yellow? Well, if that's... Yeah. I'm hydrated as a motherfucker, dude. I drink. <laughs> <laughs> I drink and done some. No, this was yellow shit. I was like, what the fuck? I have never been me. Care. Anyway, let's yeah. go. <laughs> Good <night. laughs> go on. Back, back to the straight podcast. <laughs> yeah. Straight football podcast. Straight football podcast. Only football. I'm taking. No piss. No fucking. <laughs> I'm taking the Lions. Because Matt Patricia just got fired. They just fired the GM. I think that's going to be the energy that revamps the team. I think the Lions are going to get the job done. The Bears are on a losing streak. Wait, they fired Matt Patricia? Yep. yep. They fired him. He's coming back to the Bills. And Patriots. they fired uh, Love to their, get him as a DC. their GM, too. So I just think the momentum of firing people is going to get it done. I think you know who? Matt Prater. 50-yard game winner. I just love, like normal. Him, and it's back to Lions winning football games. Dude, I'm going to have to agree with Fitz on this one. I'm going to have to go with the Lions on this. I'm going to have to take Detroit, too. I think the firing of Patricia is going to do a lot for him. And um, I, th- I think Montgomery gets 100 yards and a touchdown. Still, though. I do, too. Fantasy points. I really do, too. It's just a different offense with Trubisky. He really rumbles. <clears throat> I think that offense will get going if they keep Trubisky in. I think it's different with him in. It's better for them. It's. I, just, I don't have faith in Trubisky personally. I don't know why. It's just I got a feeling about him. Trubisky to me is Blake Bortles, but he gives them more a more of a chance than Foles. It's almost like Fitz. That's like Bortles it, too. <laughs> it's like Fitzpatrick with with Tua right now in Miami. Mm-hmm. Tua's got eighty five yards pass, and Fitzpatrick comes in one drive out does that. Who's the better performer? Yes, is Fitzpatrick going to throw a day? A, Fitz tragic game loser. Who has a Absolutely. degree from Harvard? Yeah. <laughs> the Absolutely. In the NFL Absolutely he's going to do no, perfect score on the That was Matt. Way. That was um, Andrew Luck. But he was the smartest. He's going to have a better chance to win you football games. So you got to know who to go with. I yeah. got Detroit in this one, man. And it's I'm, just... I'm going to go ahead and take Detroit as well to complete the Star, Star Frame. Frame. $5 charity of your choice. That is going to lock up <clears throat> Star Frame number two. And coming up right now, we got the Dolphins, speaking of um, Ryan Fitzpatrick, taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. And, you know, Joe Burrow, super tragic what happened to him. Obviously, mm-hmm. that happened during our uh, time off of the podcast. And I think, actually, Tua getting benched happened during, during, our, time off, during yeah. our time off as well. Um, you know, I well, I, th- I thought it was way, I'm not way, but I thought it was just the wrong move to play Tua. It gave me kind of vibes when Matt Na- Nagy played Nick Foles over Trubisky at the time. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick was riding an extremely hot hand at the time, and Miami's outplaying everybody's expectations. You're doing that with Ryan Fitzpatrick playing really well. You can save Tua for a better time, but. I don't know. I didn't think it was his time, Fitz. And see, and that's and that's my thing also here with this Dolphins team is, <clears throat> it's like, yes, the defense and special teams played hot for Tua, but it's like, why couldn't they do that for Ryan? It's the same sort of thing. 
And they kind of, they still were. And it's not like they were, yeah, they weren't playing bad. And it's still, like, that's Fitzpatrick's going to put you in issue, situations where he throws picks. But yeah, he's going yeah. to throw a shit ton of touchdowns, and he's going to put you in game-winning situations more than Tua. Because Tua's 85 yards passing, and he's not, to me, I haven't seen his ability to be a scrambler either. So he kind of did, you know, you don't really get much from him for a whole game. So I think you kind of got to keep... And right now, to me, they said it wasn't a. They said it was the benching during that game, but then now they're saying it's a thumb injury, and that's why he hasn't been starting. That's what they said about Minshew too. Yeah, and and I I think that's a cover up story. I just really think the Dolphins are going to end up throwing him on the IR this mm-hmm. for the rest of the season with the thumb. I think they're going to pull like it's a breeze thing with his thumb. You throwing thumb can't do it. Tough break, and they're going to roll with Fitz Magic. And I think you're going to roll a high here, beat the Bengals by 21-plus. I mean, without Joe Burrow under there, the Bengals don't really have an option. I think no. the Bengals have, you know, some potential for the future. they got some fun weapons down there, but I'm going to take Miami as well. Cole, who do you got? I got Miami. I just... I'm actually going to I'm gonna go ahead and lock Miami this week. Mm-hmm. I'm going to lock them, too. And I'm going to have, I'm saying five Fitz Magic touchdowns. Fuck it, let's all three of us lock them. <laughs> Are you going to lock them as well, Cam? Yeah. All right, so that that's going to do it for another Star, Star Frame. Five dollars charity of your choice. That's probably the most locks on, on one, one game. game. Yeah. yeah. We got a I don't lot. know, maybe we pull up that stat later. Yeah, we'll maybe. have to look at it, look at through pull our that one stats. Up, baby. <laughs> yeah. No, we're, we have one back in the two hours of this two. This is where we need yeah. Barn. This is where we seven. Yeah, week barn seven house back in the O2. Yeah, we're the house <laughs> Barn House Productions. Yeah, this is literally he should, he should for know common these stats. Things. This is literally where we need him. That's a stat we should know, at least. Mm-hmm. That's so, all I'm saying. <laughs> we're fucking <laughs> laughing. We're laughing. <laughs> all right, coming up next, we got the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars, and we're getting closer and closer to solidifying Justin Fields, boys, but, you know, Mike fucking Glennon, <laughs> he has a long neck, he's fun to watch. <laughs> Cold shit he got. Man, the one week I don't pick the Vikings, which was last week even though we didn't count those picks, yeah. I still picked, I didn't pick the Vikings, they lost. So, I gotta pick the Vikings. The Jags are just so bad. They're... I'm so sorry, but... I'm not even sorry about it. <laughs> the Jags are shit. So I'm going with the Vikings. No questions. You even have to ask me about that one, partner. I'm, I'm excited for James Robinson, though. Number three in the league in rushing yards. Mm-hmm. He is a dog. He is a dog. Woof. Woof. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. Or should I say he's a fucking lion, panther, jaguar, wrong cat. <laughs> I'm taking Mike Glennon and the Jaguars. Oh, <laughs> why wild. would you do that? You're wild. I'm not wild. Yeah, you, you are. You know what? I okay. seen, I seen some potential no, last you don't. week. No, That's you what I seen. He loves the I seen people. I seen Dougie Marone making some dumbass. We did com- just fire our GM. Maybe yeah. that's gonna do. It. There's some there's no, some won't. energy. And Dougie Marone, what a what an idiot! You can't go for two twice. What are you no, doing, bro? Just, bro? If you just kick the extra dude, point, we literally if you we literally the lost point, you the same exact way two times this season, where we went for two in the middle of the game for no reason and lost by the same exact score. Yeah. If you kick the extra point both times, you win the ball game. Yeah. But uh, you know, whatever, Doug. Just, Douglas. Yeah. <laughs> Douglas. But this is where Paulus. I, you know, I think yeah. Mike Glennon just does enough. He doesn't hurt you, mm-hmm. you know? And then James Robinson, he's a dog. Well, Mike, like Mike's going to hurt you. He's probably like going to do just as bad as the no, Broncos just, quarterback. No, he doesn't did. hurt you. That's the thing. He That's didn't the, turn it over. No, he, he turned the ball release. over. Oh, he's got to he turn it two, over. He threw two touchdowns, and he threw some dots that the receivers dropped. I watched the ball game. Yeah. You know, there was some... Truth was at my house. Truth was there. I've seen every snap. <laughs> you know how it goes. Don't miss a snap of any game. Yeah, you know how it be. I so, suffer. So Mike Glennon is going to get it done because these Vikings team, they lucked out when that kicker missed last week. They ain't lucking out this time. I think Rosas kicks a 50-yard game winner for Rosas. the Jacks. Damn. After no, Mike Glennon drives either. them straight down the field. 
Because then you picked the Jags week one for your upset. That's correct. I did too, man. That's a, but I'm that's using. A bold, I'm just using. Bold. I think it's them. Hey, I mean, these are the picks you want to make if you want to move up the move up the leaderboards, man. That's what I'm saying. I like moving down the leaderboards. I, I'm gonna take the Jags too, and I'm actually gonna be uh, watching this game at Zone 208 <laughs> with my buddy from work, who's a Vikings fan. <laughs> so hopefully, I don't get into a bar fight. Coming up next, we got. Why did you think that one was so? Going to zone 208. <laughs> At 10 a.m. for wigs. Yeah, dude. And beers. Yeah, yeah, bro. You're living the life. Dude, I mean, I, I don't know where else I'd want to be right now. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. 2 a.m. with the boys recording a straight football podcast. It's actually 1.30. That was pretty close. All right, coming up next, we got an AFC South battle between the Indianapolis Colts and the Houston Texans. Cole, who do you got? Uh, I got old Phillip Rivers and all 12 of his kids taking the dub. All right, Cam, what about you, man? You know, I don't know. I really don't have faith in Phillip Rivers. But I, and that's just one person on the Colts team, but... I don't have faith on anyone on the Texans team besides Deshaun Watson. He's literally carrying that team for those four wins. And Will Fuller or... Oh, yeah, and he got suspended. He got yeah. suspended. So, I mean, like, so I'm going to have to go with the Colts on this one. Fitz, what about you, man? I'm taking the Colts purely off the suspensions. Mm-hmm. I think Will Fuller being gone is just too tough for them to make up. I like Brandon Cooks. I like... I don't. I, I just don't think he's enough for the offense, unfortunately, to keep it afloat. I think the Colts get it done. I don't think it's off Rivers, though. I think Rivers throws a couple picks. Oh, he's for sure going to throw. I think Rick he throws a touchdown for every one of the kids he has. Nine bold, of them? Bold prediction. Holy crap. All so, right, I'm going to say he goes four touchdowns, two picks. And, you know, he just gets the job done. So what are the Texans are, what, four and six right now? They're in the four yeah. and seven, but they're still in the race. If they do, that's what I'm saying. They do have Colts the, twice, and they do have the Titans in their last three weeks. And that's why I think I think the Texans are going to beat the Colts. I like I like the stretch that the Texans are on. Um, I, I never like, thought this was a bad football team, and I still no. am not convinced that this is a bad football team. And I think if you are in a situation where you have some players that want to win, you're not a team that wants to tank. You're not a team that wants to lose. And you're still in a situation where you you don't have a lot of room, but you have some room to maneuver. You have a chance there. And I think guys like Deshaun Watson, they want to try. J.J. Watt, he's going to try. These. Brandon Cooks, they're going to try. So I think with the division game, the Texans, they're going to try. And that's why I got the Texans as my upset of the week, beating the Colts. Hoping that one. That would be a good upset, though. I could see that happening. Not going to lie. I didn't even think about well, that Well, I mean, one. Cornell is just, he's a good coach. He is. He, 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 I think they're playing, they're playing hard for him. And even him, he himself didn't say, think he was going to head coach ever again. So I think it's kind of cool just to have him out there doing that. This is a crucial stretch for them. They have three division games, five and, and, the, and that's kind of what I'm saying, too, is because, like, you know, when teams are in this situation, you're either going to flop yeah. And just lose out for a better draft pick, or you're winning to get to the playoffs, or you're in a weird middle ground. And I think they're in one of those weird middle grounds where you have to win. And to be honest, like in in recent football, we know Rivers. To, this is where he either makes the playoffs or he shits in the bed. These final little stretch weeks where they mm-hmm. have to play division games. This is where we find out what rivers we get this year. Do we get a Phillip playoff rivers, or do we get a, oh, there goes another season because rivers threw the ball away. I mean, it, like, we'll come back to this one. I think this is going to be one of the, could be a, could be a good upset pick here from Tree. Coming up next, we got the Raiders and the Jets. Call it you got. Jets are the worst football team in the league, and they're not going to win a game this year. I'm choosing the Raiders. Cam. Uh, you know, I could choose an upset as for the Jets, so I'm going to do that. Really? The Raiders played like dog shit last week, and I have a feeling they're going to play like dog shit again. 
And they're going to be the Jets' first victory of the season, huh? And their only victory. Bad city, yeah. I took the Jets as my upset of the week last week. And, uh, didn't unfortunately, didn't work. didn't work. You know, I've been high on them since that Patriots, you know, they were almost getting that dub. Frank Gore, guys. <laughs> I, know, I knew that no, was kind of Yeah, I was waiting. I knew he was no, waiting for that. I know, because I was waiting for you to jump on my back. Here we go. <laughs> guess, who, guess what? Guess who predicted Frank Gore's first touchdown of the year? Your boy in the you, chat. You, you can't really I say, didn't say that. that. I don't say it every, every week. Every, yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. See, yards that's what I was going to jump on. Is four point I said, yards. yeah, I, I go off the yards per carry. I never said touchdown. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's true. true. That's, that's yards. He always says 100 exactly. yards. Exactly. So y'all can get off my shit because I like, said touchdown. And then he's all like, but AP gets six yards per carry. No, and guess what? Frank Gore has had the best two games of the season the past two weeks. the only two best games he's going to get. And guess what? I think he'll have. A, I think he's going to do better than he did this <laughs> last week. This week, he's so, just going to keep it going. So but that guess, upset went for the Jets no, right there too. The Jets are not going to win. Oh, Frank shit. Gore's going to have Frank Gore's going to rush for fifty-six yards. Hey, he had, can you shut up? He had fifteen carries for sixty-one yards and a touchdown. <laughs> that's so bad. Two weeks ago, four yards per carry. You tell me that's bad. Four yards per carry. He called it. It's not bad at all. That's not bad. That's still pretty okay. bad. Okay. What about you, eighteen? Carries for 74 yards this last week. Boys. That's, that's <laughs> um, still pretty bad. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, and then you go, and then you guys, how about you guys do your research? You go look up, why don't you go look up all the young backs in the Jets system and tell me what they get every week. They I don't get, even know they, any young backs in the Jets. Yeah, exactly. I don't know anybody on the Jets. Exactly. You Dude, don't, you don't know. I asked that hey. last time I was over there. I was like, can you guys tell me a starter on the Jets defense? <laughs> Well, no. No. Because no. they either trade them or they get... Yeah, they right? traded Jamal. I don't yeah. know what I knew. Yeah. And see, the thing yeah, is, crazy. though, is... Or should we go back to Robbie this? Is every week they keep giving it to these no-name backs because you guys don't even know who the hell they are. I don't either. Mm-hmm. But that's the problem. You're giving 15 carries to these guys and they're getting like 30 yards while Gore's getting 18 for 74. That's mm-hmm. a problem. I don't care. There's ageism about the position at running back. You hit 30, everybody's like, that's it for you. At running back, that's it. Receiver, <coughs> you can go till you're 35 until people start questioning you. Larry was gone until he's 35. Now everybody's like, hmm, when's Larry going to retire? When's Larry going to well, retire? Because they say he was going to retire like two yeah, years but ago. The running back <laughs> position is completely different. There's only one guy who I knew of the last era who, was, who stayed in their 30, late 30s. Fred Jackson. That's the only person I knew. Now it's mm-hmm. Gore. Now it's AP. Yeah. You yeah. hardly hardly get one. You might as well feed him. If you're gonna get rid of Le'Veon Bell, feed the fucker till he's gassed. Yeah, even with Le'Veon because Bell, because he would like, love it. That's probably what's happening. He's probably getting gassed. Man. He isn't gassed though. You know, he's still him. no, because he's still over on the sideline. You know, mm-hmm. helmet oxygen. on, held not, helmet on, waiting for the next opportunity. Gase has just got to give him the ball. Yeah, and learn how to play action off the ball. First downs, you can't give him the fucking ball every time. Maybe play action every once in a while. Gates, maybe become a coach. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the Raiders. To beat I agree. The Jets because, because, <laughs> <laughs> because you know, I think, I, I think that's the, uh, the safe play there. Oh. And by the way, I do want to. I think Devonte Booker, the, the backup you, for Josh Jacobs. Has 150 yards and two scores. You said that the Jets were going to go on 16 this year. Fitz, do you, th- do you think that they're going to go on 16? I do, and unfortunately. Cam, even though you picked them as an upset, do you like realistically think that they will go on 16? Oh, yeah, 100%. And my do thing- you think that this this is the worst 0-16 team? No. no. Do you the think- Browns was worse. Browns was worse. The Jags was worse, too. The Jags didn't never win 0-16. Are you sure? Yes, oh. <laughs> it was just the Browns. So it was and the just Lions. Yeah, the Browns and the Raiders. There's only no, been Browns two and teams. the Lions. There's only been the Lions and the Browns. Yeah, but yeah. the Raiders. Lo- but it was two different seasons. Cause like the first, like one. Nobody's season. went completely defeated. Defeated except for two teams. Yeah, but then, but the Raiders lost eighteen, lost sixteen games in a row because they lost like one. Probably season. from a different yeah, one, season. Yeah, they, were different, yeah, they lost matter. like the last eight games mm-hmm. and they lost the first eight games in the other season. Yeah, but like from like one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. 
I don't know. I think this Jets team might be worse than the Browns worst, team. Man. I don't no, think honestly. it is. The Browns were so bad, and Hugh yeah. Jackson just doesn't know what he's doing. Neither does Adam. Oh, Adam, do, he does, but he's an idiot. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, fourth and one, like last week. Fourth and one, Frank Gore got stuffed on fourth and one. No shit. Is that the defense going to know if they're going to run on fourth and one with Frank Gore if he's checked in the ball game? <laughs> no, dip shit. That's what I'm saying. you got to coach out of that. Yeah. Play action. Who's the number one and have wide your goal, receiver? Have your running back go out for in the, the flats. Browns back then. Robbie, wait for who? The Browns. For, for the Browns back then. I think it was Tyrell Pryor. It might oh have been Terrell it Pryor. Been, it, it might have been Terrell Pryor, and it might have been Josh Gordon. Even. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's no, Terrell Pryor and Josh Gordon. Gordon. No, because Gordon. Cribs was, was their special uh, uh, turner for him. So would you take those three over? Who the fuck are the Jets' top three? Mims. They have Jameson Crowder, Mims, and Brashad Perryman have really been doing the main uh, work. Yeah, so those are – I'd take those three probably. I'd take those three. Yeah, okay, so maybe the Browns were and, worse. And honestly, I think – I think the Jets' defense may be worse, though. The Jets – no. I no, because really the, 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 so. they're not ranked last in the league in their defense. And they've still been fighting the last few weeks. Yeah. The, the Jets yeah, have been – But that 16 Browns team was in some competitive games, too. Yeah, like against the uh, Chargers – Dude, that really? 08 Lions oh, wait, team, no, I think, was, got blew out. Like, every that was a different season yeah. where they only had one win. But yeah. I don't really remember that. I was kind of young when that... And on top of that, I just think this Jets team, like, they're not... They're bad, but it's it's coached bad. Mm-hmm. It's it's everything. It's just... They fall apart, and it's, it's not their fault. I think... And I think it's momentum, too. Joe Flacco... I think he looked good in his two games with against the Patriots and last week against the Chargers. Then you change momentum. You get went back with Darnold. And then what did he do? Three points against the Dolphins. You lost all your momentum. Now you're going to keep doing that all year of who do we start, who do we not, and it doesn't work. All right, coming up next, we got the Seattle Seahawks and the New York Giants. Cole, who do you got in this one? I had to choose an upset. Dude, so I, I mean, the Giants Giant. are playing hot. I, I don't see them actually, like, in for realsies. Yeah, <laughs> I don't dude. actually see them beating the Seahawks, but I did write them in as my upset. I mean, I, I don't really, know. I don't have real evidence. I don't have nothing to say how they look. They are, they're on a three-game win streak. I think the Giants are going to be brought down to earth this week, and I think the Seahawks are going to beat them and by pretty convincingly. But I think the battle for the NFC East is going to be between the Giants and the Redskins, and that's f- or the football team, <laughs> which I think is absolutely insane because you tell anybody that before the season started and they would have laughed in your face. I want Alex Smith to go to the playoffs more than I want to breathe. I would love to see yeah, that man. I would too. Well, Mike, and, Mike and then McCarthy. choke in the playoffs, dude. And if he gets hurt in the playoffs, I would love to see Dwayne Haskins play in the playoffs more he than I would play. love to. <laughs> well, then Kyle, Kyle Allen, Allen gets hurt, then Dwayne Haskins gets in. If it's Alex Smith versus Jameis Winston in the playoffs, dude, that's all I want. I just think it's funny too that McCarthy coached himself out of that ball game. They went for a fake punt on their own 25-yard line. Yeah, after I thought not, that was bullshit. After not getting any, like, they didn't do anything for three possessions Yeah, prior. I thought that was stupid. And they're like, let's just go for it. And then they did, like, for a reverse, first of all, if you're going to do a reverse, typically you got to hope the defense bites on the first reverse, you know? Mm-hmm. Look at the defense. He hands it to the second guy on a double reverse. None of them bit. Just standing there waiting. Oh, here comes this guy, and then he got tackled behind the line of scrimmage. And then guess what? Next play, twenty-three yard touchdown. Antonio Gibson. Then pick six. Next drive from and uh, Andy Dalton from Montez Sweat. Momentum changed, and the Redskins are running away with it, or the football team. So, <laughs> That's gonna happen. Uh, I think it's going to happen this week too. I think the football team will finally take the first place in the division. The Giants are going to lose to the Seahawks. Seahawks are going to. I think Russ is going to throw five touchdowns. Uh, DK is going to heat up. Groceries for ten years at Albertsons. DK is going to heat up for five, three TDs, man. Three TDs. DK's got it. Someone's going to win three Albertsons. I forgot. What about is it? That. Five TDs. Five. Is that, is that all he has to do? The Seahawks score five TDs. Someone, someone wins 
groceries for like 10 years. Well, guess what? Six touchdowns for we're life. Getting, <laughs> we're getting... Are we getting free groceries for life? <laughs> for free groceries for the next 10 years because it's five, TD. It's not Russ. six, but five. Oh, man. I love the enthusiasm he has. <sighs> Yeah, it's the enthusiasm oh, no, of the pretty got. I definitely got the Hawks on this one. All right, so, oh, you know, Colts took the Giants, so that will not be a star frame. Coming up next, we got the Rams and the Cardinals. Fitz, why don't, why don't you... Uh, Let think, me just get myself out of the way here. I think, I think you're the one that's going to shed the most light on this situation. We're losing, boys. Boys and girls. It's over like that huh i think it is i think it's over kyler's i think we're done uh we lost the two crucial ones we needed to win we got screwed by the refs against seattle last week we just didn't play good against the patriots we should have won multiple times and we just didn't uh the rams Goff has our number he's five and one against us every other court or i think he's seven and one now he's been in within the league eight four years now yeah Seven and one against us. Every other quarterback in the division we have actually been competitive with. This guy, don't know what it is, every time beats us. So we'll find a way to do it. It'll either be Zane Gonzalez missing a field goal, uh, Kyler getting a tip pick, something like that. Larry's not going to play because of COVID. So our offense looked completely awful without him last Your offense week. looks like trash without Larry. And it doesn't make sense. It's like we don't even use him. He's just the biggest damn decoy all year. and Until playoffs. And then now we're, we can't even look good against the Patriots. I mean, DeAndre had five catches for 51 yards. And I got a couple PI calls against Gilly. But it's like, yeah. who gives a shit? I mean, it didn't help us. I'm not going to lie, Gilly kind of locked him, locked him down. Nothing's going to help us with that. So I, I just think the Rams are going to take us, and I think it's probably going to be a stomp and probably going to want to turn my TV off before the game's over. Cam, who do you got? You know, I really want to go with the Seahawks on – well, not the Seahawks, but the Cardinals on this one. I really do. But um, with the way they played against the Patriots, no. If they play that way against the Rams – they're going to put up 10 points against 30. They're going to lose very badly. The Rams are actually a good team compared to the Patriots. And we always shoot ourselves in the foot. We're the most penalized team in the league. Yeah. The Rams are well coached. They do not commit penalties. Neither is the Patriots. But so. the Patriots had a lot of penalties that week. But, yeah. And Cole Trudy up. I got the Cardinals, man. I just got a feeling. And I'm going to I'm gonna echo what Cole says. I'm going to take the Cardinals, too. You know, the Cardinals, I think, this year are destined to do something great, whether that be go to the bowl or make a deep playoff run. And these are the games that they have to win. You know, they had to win that game against Seattle, and they are going to put themselves in situations where they lose some games like they lose those Patriots games because this is still a young team that's starting to build a dynasty that's going to get better over the years. And this is a game that's going to solidify them as one of those teams that are going to be a constant playoff team. And it's going to be a win for the Cardinals. Kenyon Drake gets two touchdowns, and DeAndre Hopkins gets two touchdowns against his old arch rival, Jalen Ramsey. Damn. Cardinals take that one. Mm-hmm. Not going to happen. Jalen gets bad burnt folks. by good receivers, though, man. He got burnt by A.B. back in the day. Dude, DeAndre and Jalen are always a matchup, dude. And DeAndre always does well against Jalen. And we did no designed runs against the Patriots. I think it has something to do with Kyler's shoulder. Mm. I think he yeah, messed he up his AC joint. He didn't I run. Yeah, are, he did not run on us. We didn't even have designed runs. We do that with yeah. Kyler all the time. He's 6.7 yards per carry this year. Uh, I think something's up with his shoulder. And yeah, I think we're going to run our offense completely different. And I think that's why. It's just, it shoots us ourselves. We're shooting ourselves in the foot, either penalties wise, clock management wise, I kinda... special teams wise. Something's always getting, something's wrong, always. And now it's Kyler's shoulder, which I think is going to make us one dimensional. I think he's going to have to pass more, no run options. I think it's going to have to be Kenyon and Chase Edmonds. I'm 
Totally, I totally forgot about DeAndre and Jalen until I went on that tangent, so I'm definitely going to have to watch this game. This game is fun. Next up, we got the Patriots and the Chargers. Cam, what do you got in this one? You know, um, surprisingly, actually, it's not even a surprise. I'm going to choose the Patriots on this one. I, got, I, I actually have faith in them. Against the Chargers this week. Uh, with Justin Hubert playing, uh, I don't know. I just got the faith in our defense and the way Bill Belichick plays against young quarterbacks. The way he just game plans against them. I feel like he's going to shut them down. So, go with the Pats. All right, Colt, who do you got? I got the Chargers. I think Justin Herbert's going to get it done. Three touchdowns, two picks. But he's still going to get that dub. Oh, yeah, J.C. Jackson's for sure going to get an interception. J.C. Jackson. I think... He's a uh, dog this year. I think the Patriots are going to win this one, too. I think, you know, not really the same thing as the Cardinals. They're not, you know, a new dynasty. But they're actually not the same thing as the Cardinals, really. Let's go the same thing more as, like, the Texans. They're kind of like one of those teams that are in a weird middle ground where they're not bad enough to tank, but they're not, like, really good enough to, you know, be in a spot where they're already clinching a playoff spot. So this is a game that they have to win, and I think they do it, and... They beat the Chargers. Cole, who do you got? I mean, Fitz, who do you got? Sorry. I'm taking the Chargers as my upset of the week. That's fair. Uh, I just don't think there's much options left this season. I like Herbert. I think he's played well in games. If he can do that against the Patriots and the way Cam performed against us last week, my defense is by far not anywhere near the top in the league. Uh, Pat Pete got burnt by Jacoby Myers, who's an undrafted receiver, on a few routes. So... Uh, if Cam can't get over 100 yards against my defense, and he sure as shit ain't getting 100 yards over the Chargers defense. All right, going up next, we got the Green Bay Packers going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. And let me start this one off by just saying the Packers are going to absolutely annihilate the Eagles. This one's not even going to be close. It's going to be 45 to 10. Aaron Rodgers throws five touchdowns, so I hope an Albertsons in Wisconsin can get yeah. free groceries for ten years for when Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, and Aaron Rodgers light up the scoreboard against Philadelphia. Culture, do you got? I got the Packers. I don't really want to spend a whole lot, a lot of time talking about that. Yeah, I just, it's, I think it's, it's too much. It's too easy too for that easy. one. Cam, what do you got? It's a no-brainer for me. I'm definitely going with the Packers. Alrighty, and Fitz, what do you got? I'm taking the Packers. Zendary Smith gets two strip sacks. Right. On Carson Wentz, the most turnover. Is, is he going to get the start, or is Jalen Hurts going to get the start? I don't know. Either way. <laughs> Either, Either way, way Zendary Smith's going to be all over him. All right, and that is going to get us another star frame. $5 charity of your choice. And, you know, this might be record setting for the lowest amount of star frames. That was only our third star frame. And that brings us to a, another live performance, Cold. <clears throat> we hmm? got our Sunday night live performance. Yep. Because we got some flex games. We got a couple oh, of Mondays okay. and Tuesdays. Okay. I guess I didn't really. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, we've been waiting two weeks. Okay. <laughs> Sunday night! Dude, I mean, you know, just like how Miles, Miles Garrett, like Fitz said, is going to get better from two weeks of resting, I think your voice got better <laughs> from two weeks of I'm resting. I'm blushing. I'm blushing. Dude, I, especially after that COVID rest, man. I mean, just, <laughs> just, just great, great stuff. Great stuff. We got the Kansas City Chiefs and the Denver Broncos. I don't know if the Broncos are going to have a QB in the room. It don't matter. Tyreek Hill, Patrick Mahomes, fucking insane last week. Mm -hmm. gonna... They under underwhelmed for me. <laughs> They're gonna just continue to go off. I got the Chiefs being the Broncos. Fit to the yacht. I'll just say why they underwhelmed Phil. <laughs> two hundred and three yards in the first quarter, and you only finished with two hundred and sixty-nine yards. Give me a break, Tyreek. We're looking for at least a record. Next time, try a little bit harder for me, Phil. All right. Anyway, I think the Chiefs kill them. I think it's gonna be like forty-nine to three. Mm. 
52 total points, 49 of them Chiefs. Man, I don't even think the Broncos score any points. Oh, no Ooh, points? Shut shutout. Huh? No, I but think it's McManus, gonna, but it's gonna be, you know, I think it's going to be 30, 39 points mm. to zero. Wow. That's a weird one. That's a weird score. That might be a score of Gami. I <laughs> what? Score origami? Oh. You don't know what a score origami is? No. <laughs> you don't root for a score origami? I think Patrick Mahomes is going to get five, five teams. You got to help me out here. A score origami is a score in a football game that never has been never been scored. You don't think 39 has ever been scored? 39 to 0 probably has never been scored. That's what it is. It's like okay. 39 to 0. Okay. That's a score origami. It's a whole Twitter page. I don't go on Twitter. You should. Well, I think Kansas City and the Patrick Mahomes throws five TDs to give an Albertsons in Kansas City, Missouri, <laughs> somebody ten, ten years free of groceries. Okay, what do you got? <laughs> Clyde Edwards. Definitely not going to choose teams. the Broncos on that one. All right, I'm going to take Kansas City, and that's going to do a fourth. Star frame! Five dollar charity of your choice! Four Star Friends, man. And these Albertson jokes are just <laughs> never, ever gonna Never get ending, old. never get old. All the quarterbacks are trying to get free groceries. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, coming up next, we got a Monday afternoon game. 2 p.m., dude. I. You know, I don't work on Mondays, so I am all about this. I'm all about an afternoon. This is right when I wake up, so this is perfect. 2 p.m., the football team taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Colch, who do you got in this one, and will the Col- I mean, will the Steelers be undefeated heading into this game? Oh, yeah, so we still have to play the Ravens. Yes. So... Technically today, and I I think we'll win that game. I just it's me being biased, but they'll be undefeated going into this game and leaving this game, and I don't think we might sit some starters, man, really? because it's you think about it, it's gonna be playing on Wednesday and then we play on Monday. That's a, what a four day rest, three or four or five. Is it five? No, because that's... Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So four days. Oh, yeah, team. four days. We might sit some starters if we yeah. start... I don't know, man. Well, half of them got COVID anyway, so... Yeah. We'll be back. We probably need some rest. Yeah. <laughs> well, only one Steelers player has COVID. I know. I was just giving you shit. <laughs> just because the whole game has been... Yeah, but, I mean, been... don't be surprised if we sit some people even after just a few scores... Cam, what do you got? I'm definitely going to have to go with the Steelers on this one. Um, I really want to choose Washington, but that's not going to happen. I know Scary Terry ain't going to do it for him. That's who you got. Well, this is a big rip because I thought that the, the, I thought the football team could get a chance at taking the division, but then they played the Steelers. I didn't see the schedule. The Steelers are going to kill them. I think it'll be like 35 to 10. Mason Rudolph scores two touchdowns. I don't think so. I don't think the Steelers will sit any of their starters because I think they're going to go for a perfect record. Just because Big Ben is coming back. Mm-hmm. They're going to do it just for the Steelers. I mean, we're going to be ahead by that much race. Mason's going to throw two touchdowns. I don't think he'll. I don't think Big Ben will come out of the game at any portion. Mm. I, think, I think Big Ben's just locked in for as long as... Maybe like the last two weeks you might get like a Mason Rudolph... To keep your record undefeated, mm-hmm. but wait, wait until like week fifteen. We're not we're Maybe not better. trying to go undefeated. We're trying to see. Oh, you're gonna try to do both. No. So first place may be out of the question for this, but second place is definitely up in the air. And scared money don't make money, and that's why the football team's gonna beat the Steelers. And the Washington football team. Loki has probably the most underrated offense in the NFL. Alex Smith. Alex, not Alex Smith, Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin. Dude, Logan Thomas is a good tight end. Like, yeah. he, he is he's a, been all right. he's a he's solid been... tight end. 
too and, good. And I mean, Alex Smith is a guy that has been doing it at a high level, and the fact that he's still doing it and throwing the ball fifty times. You know how long he's been in the league? Set like 15, 17 years or yeah, something. Yeah, he's been like in the league for a long time. Like yeah. since 05 or something. 04, like. yeah. Like he's been doing it. And I think Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin, like, you know, I've, if Dwayne Haskins was the guy that would work out, like that is a team that was built for success. Chase Young on the D line. They got an exciting defense. This is a young team that's going to do it. They're going to beat the Steelers, and they're going to be the first L. On Pittsburgh's record, and they're going to separate themselves on the NFC East. You did say that about the Jags, also. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it about the football <laughs> team too. Is that just a, maybe a thought that maybe we just think that this is not the most complete undefeated team we've seen? I mean, I think it's more of a schedule-based undefeated team. I yeah, know. I mean, we've had an easy schedule. I, I just don't think. It's that good of a team. I think that's why every week we're throwing it up like, yeah, maybe. Maybe this team gets them. Maybe. Every week. Because we kind of are every other week. It seems like, oh, the Browns might get them. Yeah, there's there's a chance. these teams might get them. The Bills are like our our only, other than the, well, I guess not really even the Ravens. Not Not anymore. Yeah. But we did... We did beat a healthy Ravens and Titans team. Mm-hmm. DH barely scored, se- I mean, rushed for 70 yards against us. And that's the, the figment. If you get DH under 100, you win the ball game. That's that's what the mm-hmm. thing has been. So, All right, and to cap off Monday night, we got the Bills and the 49ers. Cam, who do you got? I know that's... Uh... I like the 49ers offense. I don't know why. I like I like the way they play, but the Bills, bro. Josh Allen is a dog. Woof. So I'm going with the Bills. Cold you got. I'm going with the Bills, too. I was wrong about them at the beginning of the year. I'll always admit when I'm wrong about the Bills, and I was wrong about the Bills. I'm taking the Bills to beat the Niners. Fitz, who do you got? I told you guys at the beginning of the season they were going to be killers. I don't know about, like I told you guys, don't know about my locks and upsets. Mm-hmm. But I'm taking the Niners for my upset of the week. They're 5-6. and six, They're in the playoff hunt. They're still fighting. They've had some IR issues. They've had a lot of injuries. But this team's still good. This team's still being able to get it done with Nick Mullins. They've swept the Rams, which is a hell of a good team. Uh, the Bills don't have John Brown. I think offensively, I don't really like Devin Singletary. I don't like the run game. I think I think the Niners stack up against the run game really well. Uh, you have your deep threat gone. You just Richard Sherman just came back. That really helps cover up Stephon Diggs a lot more. I think the Niners get this job done. And they do it on Monday night in the Cardinal Stadium to keep the division a tighter race than it should be. Just because that's how the NFC West works. All right. And then to close off the week, ladies and gentlemen, Tuesday night football. We love Tuesday night football. You know what cracked me up today is my coworkers said this is the first time that there's going to be a Wednesday football game since 2007. Hmm. And it's like, I what? what that, that was probably like Christmas or That's what I was thinking. It, was to like, it had to have been like Christmas. Like well, but Thanksgiving's always on a Thursday. So is I was it really? Like, yeah. Mm. So I was like, it had to have been Christmas because there's no way it would have been anything else. But we got the Ravens and the Cowboys on Tuesday. That's what you got. The Ravens. Lamar should be back by then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just don't like the Cowboys. I. It sucks. Dak Dak went down. That's like that's a few teams. It's just kind of shitty this year. COVID kind of, the, the whole not preseason things, I think that did play a, a big factor in injuries this year. And you lost some of those big QBs that I feel like are a lot funner to watch when they're in the game. Joe Burrow, I love watching the Bengals when they're, he's playing. Mm-hmm. When nobody when he's not, it's like, God, here we go again. Exactly. Same thing with the Cowboys. I think the Ravens smoke them. I think Lamar gets 100 yards rushing in his game back. 
I think they'll get it going. And Mark Andrews, two TDs, because he's been warming up with Lamar. Two TDs receiving from him. Mark Andrews. Told you to get I got not the freaking Cowboys, the Ravens. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Without Dak, I don't think the Cowboys are shit. Nah, dude. It's about even it. with him, he's still not that good of a quarterback. He's not even top ten. I'd say I mean, fifteen. He, had, he was he had eighteen hundred yards passing. I mean, he was one of the top five passers. They're a lot better with him than without. without him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, they're they're on top of that division with Dak Prescott right now. See, and that's the tough thing though. Now, what do you do as managers of those teams? Do you pay them the, what they wanted? He already got his contract, though. You know, it's Not hard. Dak. He didn't? Oh, yeah, he didn't. He didn't it's, get his It's money. hard to do with the whole NFC East, because, I mean, what do you do if, like, you're the Giants? Do you commit to Daniel Jones another? Well, I mean, they're still winning the, the, yeah, they're still winning the race, and it's they're without in. Saquon, so I think so. What do you yeah. do if you're the Red, the, the football team? You commit to? You commit to Alex Smith for, another. for right now. And that's what they said they wanted to do. They said they mm-hmm. want to bring him back. So, I... And that's tough for me. Even with Burrow, it's like he might be two years out from what I'm hearing from his knee injury. His what do you knee injury he looked just not. as bad as Alex Smith's. Injury. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. It was that bad because the guy landed on his foot. Then he like bad. tears MCL, MCL, ACL, ACL and more. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say what else. And I just, you know, that might be two years out. And then you think about he, that. Do he you, might not play football. Do you want to ever again? No, wanna, he's gonna play again. But do you want to pay good. him to? Talk yeah, because, I mean, if he's gone for two years, that's, then like, that's when you look at it. You're going to have to. You can't. You, you, you can't pay He's going to have to prove him. himself in those two years in his rookie contract. And that's the toughest thing. And and mm-hmm. that sucks because the Cowboys were, you, you can't say it, Dak was hot as shit, way better than they're looking now without any quarterback mm-hmm. or any viable option. And now, do you pay him the money he wants, or what do you do? Colin I think, Kaepernick is still a free agent. And by the way, by the way, too, I'm going to take the Ravens, too, so we can just conclude that with a star for a dollars charity of your choice. And I do want to say, too, that I think the 2020 offseason is going to be one of the most interesting offseasons of all time, especially around the quarterback position. I think you're going to see a lot of old faces in new places. Like, I think guys like Matt Stafford might even oh. bounce and, around. I think, like, Matt Ryan might even be I think a guy some, that leaves. I think Jameis it, Winston, he's going to be around. I think a coach recommits to, to Stafford in Motown, in Detroit. I think you get a new coach, you try to I mean, to you even got, back. like, guys like Aaron Rodgers. I leave. think that's the guy that leaves. I think that'll be the big ticket item of the yeah, whole Yeah, I can see season. Aaron Rodgers leaving. I think he's going to throw out this just the MVP season, and I think I think he'll do. I think he's really going to do a pull of old Favre. I really do. I don't think that Kirk Cousins is a viable option for the Vikings. I could see him being like, I see, wish he was. see that MVP season. Well, guess he's what? Another guy that can go now else. I can void out because Rodgers can void out after this season. Mm-hmm. He can void out of his contract. You can say, well, you guys wanted Jordan Love so bad. Pay me more. Well, here you go. Pay me Here's a lot. Jordan Love. Pay me a lot. I'm out of here. Jordan. I'm going to go play for the Vikings. We'll see you twice a year. And then he goes with Dalvin Cook. He goes with people that feel him. He's got Jefferson. He's got an O-line. Mm-hmm. Now, is, go. now is a more important time than ever to know who your quarterback is. Mm-hmm. Because. And, it's, and, and now's the time to not be making moves like the Packers just did. You got to buy into Rodgers last few years. You got to give him a receiver. You got to give him playmakers. When you have two running backs and you're drafting a running back in the second, do you think Jordan Love makes a star out of Alan Lazard and Marquez Valdez no, scaling? Never. <laughs> Not and that's what I'm years. saying is, Rodgers should never have to elevate a receiver. Tom Brady did. He does, but Rodgers shouldn't have to at this point because he's had Adams for all this time. And Adams has been eating it up for him the whole time. Mm-hmm. You have to get him a viable number two at this point. Yeah. This whole time. Brady, the, I mean, when he was Brady. younger, he had Driver. He had, had Driver, Nelson, Jennings, Jermichael Finley. They never gave and Brady they were a viable all number one yard, and or two. Well, yeah, they're all 1,000-yard people, though. And they built something around Brady. He had a bet. Uh, you can argue that he has an O-line that fights for Brady more throughout oh, yeah. his career. Oh, yeah. 
but that's the thing is you got to make it viable after a while. Devontae Adams is an amazing receiver, but you have no number two. You still have it. Will Fuller. Did you didn't get him? You guys yeah. got to do it. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where these quarterbacks land. But anyway, that's going to do it for another episode of Weekly Picks. Cole, do you anything you got to say to the people? Have a good rest of your day. Cam? Have a good day. Have a beautiful fucking morning over there on the East Coast. <laughs> the East Coast. Yeah, it's <laughs> 5 a.m. there. Yeah, and this is probably going to be going up. out at like 6 p.m. Exactly. <laughs> but all right. Well, you know. Anyway, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys haven't already, you can check all links down below. You click me on Facebook, at True Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at True Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel three days a week. And nobody out working me. Those are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, just have a great rest of your day. I bet.